Hi there, my name is Joshua Hall and I'm recording this video blog as part of my Library 100 assignment. Um, and I'm talking about the new student dialogue that I attended. Um, mine was on the topic of the power of privilege. And I guess I'm going to start off with just going down the list of questions I was told I needed to answer. Um, question number one, do you feel your group achieved true dialogue? Um, I'm going to go ahead and say yes to this one because, like I said, our dialogue was on the power of privilege and it was more based on the privilege of different socioeconomic groups in society. And so, you know, those groups that have more privilege in society generally have more power as well. For example, white, middle-aged male has more has more power in society, I guess, than female, Hispanic, single mother, for example. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, um, and because we didn't necessarily have as controversial a one as other groups, a lot of the other ones sounded really controversial, which is why I didn't go to them. Um, we were more able, our group was more able to talk openly to each other. Um, also, because we didn't really know each other in the group, we weren't afraid of sounding stupid or... Sorry, my um, video recorder froze there for a second. Anyway, we weren't afraid of sounding stupid in front of each other or anything like that. Um, we were just simply a bunch of people politely talking with each other about a subject um, that we really didn't necessarily feel that strongly about. Um, I'm sure some people did, and if they did, I apologize if you're seeing this. Um, all right, next question. Dynamics of the group. Were there any active voices in your dialogue? I would definitely say yes to this one because there were, any time a question was asked, it was the same small group of people, four or five people that would always start off and then kind of once they put their two cents in, everyone else was willing to kind of follow along and talk about the subject or talk about the question that was asked. Um, were there more reserved voices in your dialogue? Like I said, yeah, yes, you know, once the more active voices put in their two cents, everyone was more willing to talk more openly. So I guess they would be, the people who were waiting, I guess would be more reserved voices and the people who were willing to take the leap are were the more active voices. Um, and then third bullet point, what role did you play in your group? Um, I would say I was one of the active voices because I didn't really feel like I needed to be reserved. I mean, I was willing to talk about this and I knew that if I at least tried to get the group to talk, then maybe it would go a bit faster um, since I was would prefer to have been somewhere else during this time. but. That's college for you. Um, next question. Why do you think dialogue is a component of Library 100? I really don't know. Um, I was asking myself this as I walked in, and I'm ask I asked it when I walked out, and I'm still asking myself this. But I think it probably has something to do with having college students, and therefore society, because I guess college students are supposed to be the leaders in society, I don't know. Um, getting college students to be able to openly discuss something without it devolving into a debate or an argument. Um, sometimes the best way to fix an issue is to simply bring about awareness, and my guess is that having a dialogue being shown how a true dialogue can work is part of that idea of being able to simply bring awareness to something without actually 
arguing over whether it's right or wrong. Um, I wish I had a better, better answer. If someone wants to share with me, I'd appreciate it. Hmm, sorry. And final question, do you see dialogue as a useful tool in your university experience? Um, I know that the people who are watching this and recording it for a grade probably want to hear a yes, but I'm going to be a bit more truthful and say I don't think it's going to be as useful a tool as the people who design Library 100 want it to be for me personally. Um, not that it's a bad idea, it's just I'm a computer science major, so I, you know, I spend my day around math and computer code. Um, I've spent all day yesterday doing that, I'm going to spend all day tomorrow doing that, and I'm going to spend the next however long I work doing that. And I'm perfectly okay with that. Um, that being said, I'm sure there are going to be points where, um, you know, I'm going to be in a professional situation where I'm going to have to say, you know, bring a dialogue style component to it and say, look, here is what I think this is, or here's what this is, here's what I think of it, um, and, you know, I'm sure that it will come about at some point, and knowing me and my memory, I will probably have completely forgotten about this video and everything about Library 100, but um, I guess when that time comes far into the future, the little Library 100 fairy on my shoulder will be like, I told you it was a good idea. Um, but as for the overall university experience, I really don't think so. I mean, maybe. I mean, I'd love to be proven wrong. Um, I have another two and a half years at Clemson, hopefully. I don't take much longer than that. Um, and if in that two and a half years I get proven wrong and I'm in a dialogue with someone about something and I really want to be in that dialogue and I'm not, it's not part of a class, then... I guess you guys win, <laughs> but I don't really see that as being that important to me in my university experience. Um, and I guess I can keep talking for a little bit while since it says five to ten minutes. I've got another two minutes to go before I hit that ceiling. Um, so I guess I'm going to comment about the dialogue itself. Um, like I said, it was on the power of privilege, and it wasn't really what I was expecting. Um, I was more thinking something along the lines of, you know, responsibility of those put in power by others. Let's use politicians as a good example, because that's an example that's kind of prevalent, considering it's the second and there's like a week until election day. Um, but, you know, I was expecting talking about, you know, people being entrusted with power over others and responsibility of that power and stuff like that. Um, that being said, I guess, you know, the idea of the dialogue with different socioeconomic groups and their power because of their privilege, I guess that's a valid thing to be talking about as well. Um, I think the dialogue could have been a little less extensive. It seemed like everything was broken down when it didn't really need to be, you know. I know there's a million socioeconomic groups in society, but we don't need to compare all of them. But I, my timer says I'm almost out of time, so I guess I'm going to wrap this up. Um, as I said earlier, my name is Joshua Hall. I'm from Clemson University, and this is my new student dialogue for Library 100. And I hope you had fun listening to this rambling. About as much fun as I had saying it. Bye. Bye.